Either way, just using my team. I'll make one, maybe two YouTube videos out of it, but I could do multiple streams using this team in Stadium. Um, and while I was saying that, exit. We made it to the end. of Rhydon statues. They look like other Pokemon as well, but a lot of these statues are Rhydon because Rhydon was just the first Pokemon that was designed. That's why Rhydon's index number is number one. Alright, we've made it. So this will be... I, I, I normally don't say this within the stream because I don't know how I'm going to edit things, but I know this will be the end of an episode. I'm going to guess, well, Viridian Gym is going to be one episode. Entirety of Victory Road and the build-up to it, Indigo Plateau. Well, the uh, batch checks and stuff is one episode. Not sure where I'll put the rival battle, probably in the Viridian Gym episode. You'll know by this point when, you've already, when you're watching this on YouTube. But that's two episodes so far this stream. And I know the E4 and Champion are going to be their own separate stream. Champ in the making. At Pokemon League, you have to face the Elite Four in succession. If you lose, you have to start all over again. This is it. Go for it! From here on, you face the Elite Four one by one. If you win, a door open to the next trainer. Good luck. Aragorn, the Hitmon Lee. Amigo, the Persian. Coops, the Blastoise. Coconut, the Executor. Propane the Ninetales. Sheriff the Snorlax. With these six, it has to happen. Most level 44, I think one or two, two are level 45. We're not even gonna hit 50 by the end of this. This is gonna be a huge challenge. Let's do this. Whee! I don't think you're gonna, I'm pretty sure you can't encounter Pokemon there, but still, it's kind of weird you can surf here. Anyway. Welcome to the Pokemon League. I am Lorelei of the Elite Four. No one can best me when it comes to icy Pokemon. Freezing moves are powerful. Your Pokemon will be at my mercy when they are frozen solid. <laughs> are you ready? Yes, I am. Lorelei, the first of the four trainers in the Elite Four. Ice-type specialist. Starting with the water and ice-type, Dugong. Ten levels higher than Aragorn. Nine levels higher than the chair from Propane in the back. I did say, the level 53 we had seen earlier in, like, the rival battle with his, his um... Venusaur? 
was the highest we've seen so far. There's a 53 in this fight, but the rest is 54 or higher. Can you see where this is going? Every fight is gonna get more difficult in different levels. We're already 10 levels lower on the first fight, even though we were higher level than pretty much anything up to the seventh gym. You see why it's a bit difficult now? Well, let's make use of the fact that it's an ice type and we have a fighting type out, jump kick. Got the critical hit, first kill is for me. Here comes Cloyster. Also an ice type, also weak to jump kick, but high defense stat. So I think I actually want to switch it to Koops. Also, Koops is fast, so it might outspeed the Cloyster, therefore avoid... I want an Amigo, why did I go Koops? Huh? Let's see what Seismic Toss does. I want an Amigo for Thunderbolt, why did I select Koops? Huh, well, okay, I'm going Koops now because it's supersonic. Also, I am going to try to not use any healing items in battle as an added challenge. And then we heal in between battles. If that works, that'd be epic. If it doesn't, then I'll just use them. But I'm going to try without healing items in battle. Critical hit, you are done. Goodbye. Next Pokemon, Slowbro. A water and psychic type. The only type on only Pokemon on Lorelei's team that isn't um, the type that she specializes in. And it doesn't even have an ice move. Doesn't mean she can't use it. I'm gonna use Aragorn though. And use this as the first example of um, smart AI. Aragorn should be able to win just fine. I'm gonna. I'm even gonna meditate. Slowbro's amnesia, as explained earlier in the walkthrough, the best move in the game, really. Psychic types, especially pure psychic types, with psychic are great. Amnesia doubles his special stat, so double special defense and special attack. Slowbro, though, it just uses its level upset that it has at this point. With Growl, Withdraw, Amnesia, and Water Gun. That's its only damage I move in the Elite Four. Water Gun. Thing is, it will never use Water Gun. La 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 <laughs> Metronome! <laughs> We're gonna win the fight with Metronome. Thrash! Kaboom! High defenses? Well, I have six meditates, so... Boom! Slowbro gone. Why did it not even attack me with Water Gun? Well, this will come up later on the E4 again. I'm, I know that that will be the case. Smart AI. Some of their boss battles, especially the Elite Four and Champion. I'm not sure which battles, especially have the smart AI. Some trainers, especially wild Pokemon, just use random moves that Pokemon have. I think general standard trainers do as well. Things like rival gym leaders, E4 champion, they have smart AI. Which means that if they have a super effective move against you, let's say you're a golem, very weak to water or grass, they will use like Surf or Hydro Bump or Razor Leaf, which is very good against you. There's one oversight that the programmers made in that smart AI quirk. And that is that the to make the game check if there is a super effective move, they just look at the type. And you might think, wait, isn't that normal to be super effective? You need to just look at types of the move versus the type of the opponent? Yes, but I never said it was a damaging move. As long as the move is of a type, that is, of which the type is super effective against the target, it will exclusively use that move. 
Now, if, let's say, you are an Executor, and, let's say, the Moltres we fought had Peck and Fire Spin, both super effective against Executor, if that Moltres would have had Smart AI, it would have used either of the moves. Um... In Slowbro's case, why I was confidently able to fight it with my Hitmonlee, Slowbro has Growl, normal type, Water Gunner Withdraw, Water type, and Amnesia, Psychic type. Amnesia, out of those four moves, is the only move that is super effective against Hitmonlee as a pure fighting type. Therefore, the smart AI will only use the Psychic type move, even if it doesn't damage the opponent. The smart AI continues to use the psychic move, thinking, Oh, I'll be fine. We'll take out the fighting type, because it's super effective. But it didn't. Oversight in the programming, I would think. And there is at least one more fight later on, where that can be ex exploited more. And something I can that can actually be done is if you take a really low-level poison type, Zubat, or even a Weedle, potentially, you could throw it out against a Slowbro, and just continuously deal damage to take it out. Maybe use, like, Zubat with Toxic, because uh, Weedle might still run out of uh, power points for Poison Sting. Um, but... Yeah, you can, you can see why, as long as you're weak to Psychic and not to Water, you can just take out the Slowbro without being afraid at all. Alright, Lorelai's final Pokemon, Lapras. Level 56, her strongest Pokemon. Absolutely the best moves. And I'm actually going to check, because it's her ace, is this her standard level up set or not? Um, no. Three of the moves are Body Slam, Confuser, a Hydro Pump. But instead of Ice Beam, which is an amazing move to have, this one has Blizzard, which is even better. Much higher power with only 10% lower accuracy. But they messed up just like many other trainers like Koga and Blaine. And they allow me to KO them. You only get a taste of Pokemon League power. Well, there's three more trainers left. It is the Elite Four, after all. Let's heal up our Pokémon. Use the Lemonades that we still have remaining. Propane, Amigo, a bit higher level. Uh, a bit higher HP again. And we are into the next room. I am Bruno of the Elite Four. Through rigorous training, people and Pokemon can become stronger. I've weight trained with my Pokemon. Alka! We will grind you down with our superior power. Hoo-ha! Starting with a level 53 Onyx. And, well, we have a coconut, so Mega Drain? They actually. An Onyx is faster. Oh, yeah, Onyx had 40 base attack with 70 base speed, which is still somewhat confusing to me. Yeah, this is his uh, lowest level Pokemon. 55 and up for the rest. Hitmonchan. Because this is the fighting type specialist. May have started with an Onyx, which isn't a fighting type. But he definitely has some very strong fighting types in his steam. Hitmonchan being one of them. But we have Coconut, so we should be fine. Hitmonchan doesn't actually have a damaging fighting move as a standard. It does have counter, which in this generation, counter only works because normal and fighting moves. No other mode and no other types like in Gen 2 and later. It has Mega Punch, Ice Punch, and Thunder Punch as well. Mega Punch, the only one that really damages you. Ice Punch and Thunder Punch are nice, but Hitmonchan has a horrible special stat. 
Hitmonlee. Focus Energy, which actually lowers his chance for crit. Jump Kick, High Jump Kick, Mega Kick. Lots of kicking moves, but it decides to use Focus Energy, so goodbye. Even though I'm 11 levels lower. This is probably going to be the easiest Elite Four just because Coconut. Level 45, I'm going to keep using Coconut. But except against this one, because Koops is level 44. This is an easy kill for Koops as well. Another Onyx. Its best move is Slam, I'd argue. Rock Throw, nearly as powerful. But even 12 levels lower, Surf from Koops. Enough for a KO. I said it would be really challenging, but so far, we've been able to make good use of super effective moves, and I guess a bit of Lorelei using a super potion on Lapras, even though, really, come on, you're an Elite Four member, use at least max potions, or hyper potions. And there's Machamp. We're not gonna use Amigo against it, because Machamp actually has Submission as a move. We're just gonna switch back to Coconut. Let's see if Coconut can one-shot this thing. Don't think it will, even with Psychic. Let's find out. Actually faster, which is surprising. Coconut's not that fast. Huh! Okay, well that was Bruno. So that Machamp is Focus, Energy, and Leer, which are like, eh. Fissure, so if it's faster, it can one-shot you. And Submission, the team that we found in Victory Road. My job is done. Go face your next challenge. So that was quick. I think they were all one-shots. So we didn't get damaged. At all. Um... Coops, I want you first for this one. As you can hear, there's creepy music. What might be next? I am Agatha of the Elite Four. Oak's taking a lot of interest in you, child. That old Duff was once tough and handsome. That was decades ago. Now he just wants to fiddle with this Pokedex. He's wrong! Pokemon are for fighting! Auka, okay. I'll show you how a real trainer fights. Here is Agatha. She may be an old lady, but she is one heck of a Pokemon battler. Ghost type specialist, starting with Gengar. Gengar's level up set is, well, pretty limited. Confuse Ray, Nightshade, Hypnosis, Dream Eater. And Lick, I guess, is there, but that's the first one in the list, so that's removed. So, standard damage, you can expect Nightshade 56 damage, though, because it's equal to the level of the user. Then if it hits a, it hits a Hypnosis at 60% at accuracy, Gengar's faster, Gengar is a fast Pokémon. Then I can use Dream Eater to heal. Because Dream Eater can only be used if the opposing Pokemon, the, the target of the move, is asleep. But then it is a powerful Psychic type move that will deal damage and just like things like Mega Drain, heal your HP. The thing is, for me, I don't have to be afraid of that. I don't have to be afraid of Dream Eater ever hitting me. I'm not sure why they used it. Smart AI really only works with the super effective moves, because that wasn't smart trying Dream Eater when I'm awake. But even when Hypnosis would hit my Blastoise or any other Pokemon, I would use Pokeflu. Although I, I did say I would try without items in battle, didn't I? So in which case I wouldn't do it. Anyway, next Pokemon, Golbat. It's not a ghost type. Still poison, so you might argue that she's actually the poison type specialist. But maybe he specializes in ghosts, but her entire team happens to be poison types. Amigo, you're the only one that's level 45. Let's go. Golbat, it's level 56, but just like some other Pokemon, just due to its level up movesets and how it works, it's not actually all that dangerous. It has Confuse Ray, which is probably the most dangerous move on there. It has Supersonic as well, which, why would you have Supersonic and Confuse Ray if you could just have Confuse Ray? It's more accurate. 
It has Haze, which gets rid of sad boosts, which I currently do not have. And then it's Wing Attack. Which, again, in Generation 1 is only 35 power. So, because even Elite Four members, outside of their ace Pokémon, will only use the level-up sets of a Pokémon, and in Generation 1, a lot of the level-up movesets aren't very good at all, these, these challenges that I said would be challenging, because they're at least 10 levels higher than me, might not be all that challenging. Here's Haunter, one level lower than the Gengar that um, we started with. Also a bit lower stats, because it's a Haunter and not a Gengar. But it has the same moves. Also, they switch for some reason. In that case, I just hit Arbok. Arbok's best move, Bite. Well, I guess Acid as well, but 60 power, maximum. Something in the Elite Four should not have a 60 power move as its best. So I think that is one of the reasons why a planned out team like the one I have, with not only defensively a varied team in terms of types, but also offensively, almost every uh, type is on my team. And I have a very uh, type varied team can take care of basically any Pokemon with the ones that I have. Which is amazing. Okay, Haunter's back. Let's try this again. This might be the end of Koops, though. Confused. Yeah, okay, Koops is... I, I would use a full restore here, but I said I was going to try it without items. So, I will stick to that. Nightshade. If I would have used Earthquake last time, I could have actually won it. But I didn't. <coughs> okay, well, Thunderbolt. We'll do it with that. With Arbok already gone, that leaves Agatha with one Pokemon. Her main Gengar. Let's send in Propane. Now this Gengar has the same moveset as the first Gengar, and as the Haunter. But, as with all Ace Pokemon, to my knowledge anyway, they have at least one move different. Sort of maybe the signature move, maybe, if you want to call it that. At least the gym leaders had that. As Gengar has Toxic, which I would argue makes this the most dangerous Pokemon um, on the team. Toxic, Nightshade, Confuser, it can be pretty deadly. The thing is, they replaced Hypnosis, not Dream Eater. Now, I know Hypnosis and Toxic don't work well together because you can only have one of those status ailments and not both. But Dream Eater will never work because you can't put them to sleep. You'd have to, for Dream Eater to be able to work, she would have to put a Pokemon to sleep with her previous Gengar or her Haunter and then use Dream Eater with this Gengar on that Pokemon that is still alive because I like switched it out or something. Not try to use Dream Eater against something that isn't asleep. Agatha has been beaten. I have nothing else to say. Run along now, child. I will. To the final member of the Elite Four. This is one of my revives on Coops. Another lemonade. Wait, I just noticed something. 
Um, wait, what does Machamp's level up say? I'm checking something for Bruno's Machamp. Yeah. I'm not sure if this was done intentionally or not, but it seems consistent, at least in the Elite Four. All of the ace Pokémon, so far that's been Lapras, Machamp, Gengar. The third move in their move slot was replaced. Lapras had Ice Beam in the third slot, which became Blizzard. Machamp would have had Seismic Toss, which is a pretty good move, replaced by Fissure. Like, why would you not replace, like, Focus Energy or Leer? Seismic Toss is kind of decent. Gengar, Hypnosis in the third slot, became Toxic. And the ace of the next person that we'll encounter had the third one replaced, I believe. Let's check. Yeah, the third move was replaced again. Huh. I'll check it with, uh, if that's the case of the champion later, but... That's... something. That's pretty interesting, actually. I wonder if that's the case of the gym leaders now. I need to check that. I'm not gonna do that much here, because that'd make people wait, but... And I don't want to cut too much. Actually, I, I could do it and then I cut it just out of this. We have a walk. All the way up to here, I always found this special. The only way, only time ever in any Pokemon game that you don't just walk into the next room, but you have to walk quite a bit to actually get it. You don't have to touch anything, it automatically um, walks you all the way to this spot. Maybe it's an extra suspenseful build-up to the final member of the Elite for the final challenge that awaits us. Okay. I just haven't checked Blaine, but outside of Blaine, at least, what I just figured out about the move that is replaced, at least in red and blue, this is the case. I don't know if it applies to any other game, but at least in red and blue, in the English versions, all gym leaders and Elite Four members have an ace Pokemon. Like, their best one, generally their highest level Pokémon. The signature move, or the special move that they might use, which is always a TM move in terms of the gym leaders, is always only on the final Pokémon, and is always the third move in their move slot. The rest of the team, including the ace Pokémon itself, just looks at, okay, we have Sabrina's Alakazam, her ace Pokémon, level 43. What are its moves at level 43 if you put them in order when you level them up? Psybeam, Recover, Psychic, Reflect. Psychic is easily the best move, right? But no, Psychic is the third one! So Psychic goes away to put Psywave in. Starmie for Misty. Harden is out. Bubble Beam is in, even though it has a free fourth move slot that it could have used for Bubble Beam. Not how it works. Consistently, every one of them, the third move in their move slot. Just go to Bulbapedia or to like Serebii, look at the uh, move order for red and blue, because sometimes it differs with yellow. But look at the move order um, in its learn set in Pokemon Red and Blue. Look at the level the Pokemon is. Look at the last four moves that it learned at that point, and put them in. The first slot will be the first one out of the four learned. The last one being the last one. The third one, no matter what it is, is gone. So, Machamp for Bruno lost Seismic Toss. Sabrina lost Psychic. I'm actually going to check Blade and Arcanine just to be sure. Um, Blaine... Yeah, Blade has Fire Blast there on his Arcanine. Which replaces Leer. Okay, yeah, that was also consistent with Blaine. And even... I haven't checked the level-up sets for the starter Pokémon, so Venus or Blastoise Charizard, but just looking at their move sets that those Pokémon have, still consistent! One move is changed, and it's the third one in the, in the slots. That's... Wow. Okay. That's a discovery. I didn't actually notice that. That's very cool. 
Very interesting discovery. So, so maybe that eased programming, so where they could just choose one move and then the rest of the programming just replaced the third move no matter what it was. Huh. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. And now that we're done with that, we have one more fight to go. Ah, I heard about you, Alka. Okay. I lead the Elite Four. You can call me Lance, the Dragon Trainer. You know that dragons are mythical Pokémon. They're hard to catch and raise, but their powers are superior. They're virtually indestructible. Well, are you ready to lose? Your league challenge ends with me, Alka. Lance the Dragon Master. Starting off with... It looks like a dragon, I'll give it to him. Gyarados. We might not have an electric tab, but we have an electric move. Let me go Thunderbolt. Over half. They use Leer because it's in their move set. They don't have a super effective move on Amigo. No, no fighting types on the Gyarados. So random move selected, most likely. Not that smart AI. Another Thunderbolt takes care of Gyarados. There we go. Next up, Dragonair. Hey, Aragorn! When are you going to meditate? Remember how I said that later in the lead four I will be able to just show the thing again with the smart AI with the super effective moves? Yeah, so agility is a psychic type move. And Dragonair does not have any other psychic or flying moves. It has Dragon Rage. It has Slam. It has Hyper Beam. But if I wanted to, this Dragonair won't be using Hyper Beam. And neither will the other Dragonair that this guy has. Because that's the same move set, so I can keep this metronome. -ing. Take him out with metronome. Double team. Sure, why not? I want to have some fun with metronome, but this is safe because I know he won't hit me. They have infinite power points as well. So they're not going to run out of agility. They're just, I think, in Generation 1 that the opponents have that. Fire Grip, medium power move, but with. Six meditates up, that's four times my normal physical attacking power. That's gone. And there's another Dragon Air with the exact same moveset, Slam Hyper Beam Dragon Rage, which we will never see. And then I just Bone Meringue. Because I can. One shot on the Dragon Air. And here comes the Tree Sap Pokemon. Coops, your turn. Now. I'm actually just gonna check. Do they all have it? Dragon there. Dragon is level 56. That's consistent, yeah. I think they might all have it at this point in their level up set. Hyper Beam. And all of them happen to be in the fourth slot, so quite possibly because that's the final move they learn in the level up set. That Lance signature move. Hyper Beam. All of the Pokemon know it. And all of the Pokemon can use it, if I wouldn't use their smart AI against them with Hitmonlee, or a Zubat, or a Weedle, or anything else that's weak to Psychic. Bye, Aerodactyl. Now, he has one more Pokemon. One more. And this Pokemon is definitely his strongest. It has Hyper Beam as well. But I can use... Hitmon Lee <laughs> against this one too <laughs> because the only difference 
between the Dragon Air and the Dragon Knight is the third move. Consistently, the third move is replaced by something new. And this Dragon Knight's actually pretty special. We might see it very early. Let's see. There we go. Barrier. Dragon Knight has learned Barrier. Barrier is learned by Mr. Mime, by Mewtwo, and by Tentacool and Tentacruel. Only in Generation 4 did some, did some other Pokémon learn it. I guess via breeding some others, but... Never Dragonite. This Lance, the Dragon Master, is such a master of Dragon types that Dragonite, this Dragonite has a move that I can't even learn. Also, it also just has agility, so... I can keep med uh, meditating. I do want to see their Hyper Beam, though, because this is the final time we actually get the... I think the opponent can even use Hyper Beam. So I want to have a Hyper Beam battle. Amigo. I could get through this fight without damage. If I wanted to, I would have attacked with... Um, with Aragorn. But I want a Hyper Beam battle. I'll just Thunderbolt to weaken him a bit. Oh, there's the Hyper Beam! Powerful Hyper Beam! I decided to not use Body Slam or something else because I wanted to give him the chance to use Hyper Beam. There's the destructive force of Hyper Beam, and because they KO'd me, I'm not even getting in the trip. How are you Snorlax at all this so far? I might not have Rock Slide. You're a bird, right? Rocks. That did nothing. Oh yeah, because of Barrier. I need to use special move scopes. Also because he's 16 levels higher. I need to not forget that either. So far it's been going so well and easy because of their bad move stats. Or because I've been able to really good make use of type advantages that I have. That I haven't really thought much about the fact that we're now 16 levels lower. But still, it's not too much of a problem. So yeah, on both Dragonairs and on Dragonite, bring in a poison or a fighting type. You won't be damaged. Because they'll just use agility and then... Um, the case of Dragonite barrier potentially, but it does increase the defense by two stages. So you might want to use special moves, but or toxic. That's a possibility as well. Just wait until he takes himself out. We've been the Elite Four. We are the champion. I still can't believe my dragons lost to you, Hoka. You are now. The Pokemon League Champion. Or you would have been, but you have one more challenge ahead. You have to face another trainer. His name is... Geez! He be the Elite Four before you. He is the real Pokemon League Champion. Yep. A rival from the very start. Who was our opponent in our very first Pokemon battle back in episode one? Back then it was just Squirtle versus Bulbasaur. Two not that strong Pokemon at level five. Meanwhile, my Pokemon are either at level 45 or at level 46. And we just fought something at level 62, so you can imagine the next ace is going to be even higher. Now normally here I would put the level 45s up front, the 46s at the back. But because of, I, because of something, I know that it's coming up. After we beat the champion, I want to have an exact order of Pokemon. I want the order of Pokemon Party to be exactly like they are in the overlay. Blastoise, Persian, Ninetales, Hitmonlee, Snorlax, Exeggutor. 
I don't really care who's higher level than the others. Also, what I'm gonna do, to add even more challenge to it, besides not using items, <clears throat> he has six, I have six. One of mine against one of theirs. If I don't lose Pokemon, then we see all of my Pokemon just once. Probably not gonna work. We'll see though. Hey! I was looking forward to seeing you, Alka. Okay? My rival should be strong to keep me sharp. While working on Pokedex, I looked all over for a powerful Pokemon. Not only that, I assembled teams that would beat any Pokemon type. And now, I'm the Pokemon League Champion. Okay. Do you know what that means? I will tell you. I am the most powerful trainer in the world! This music, man. Let's go. Pidgeot starting off at level 61. Has Sky Attack and Wing Attack as his damage, and with Mirror Move could damage me as well. As Whirlwind, which is useless. So yeah, if, if you have something that resists flying, especially if you have a rock move, you'll generally be fine. If you have like a Golem or a Rider with Rock Slide, use it. Because it'll resist Sky Attack and Wing Attack, and if they Mirror Move your Rock Slide, you'll still resist that because of your Ground Type. Alright, Alakazam is up next, and this one, unlike Sabrina's, ha doesn't have its third move replaced, so it actually has Psychic. Outside of their starter, probably their most dangerous Pokemon. Or, if the opponent has Gyarados, the rival, um, which they do in my case, that could be dangerous as well if they use Hydro Pump or Hyper Beam. Um... Do we just use them in order? Let's just see if we can just use them in order as well and see if that matchup even works. If we can make it happen. Amigo is much slower. Well, no, actually, it might not be that much slower, but 14 levels lower. Let's see, instant hyper beam? They use recover, which is dumb. Insta one shot hyper beam? No! Now they get two turns. Hyper Beam didn't KO! But they used Recover! But we didn't use Hyper Beam! So this doesn't KO! So we lose Amigo anyway. Ah. Yeah, I knew I'd probably... Uh, body Slam wouldn't be enough, so I was like, maybe Hyper Beam will be enough. Level difference is too great. Even with Alexander not having that great defensive stat, uh, defensive stats, at least the physical defense, and its HP. Yeah, that's uh, that's not it. Let's let's go, Coops. We're gonna surf. Actually, with its high special stat and the level difference, this might not even KO. I just went back into the Pokemon I've already used, but this is where the real challenge comes in. How do we take out the Alexander now? Because it also has Psychic. Okay, scratch there. I'm going to use the Pokemon in order. I need to be smart to win this fight. Earthquake to go around its high special stat. It's still not enough. Okay, so I need Snorlax. If Koops goes down, I want Snorlax. I was really hoping to keep Koops for the final battle. Because I've not really had Blastoise v Venusaur. And I want Blastoise for Venusaur. Okay, um... Oh wait, Propane! 
they won't get a chance to use recover if we use quick attack. I'm so glad I uh, put quick attack back on. Level 46 for propane. Rhydon. Actually gonna use propane. You're like, boy, you just said you were gonna be smart. Use Executor. Well, Rhydon doesn't actually learn any ground or rock moves by level up. So it only has normal type moves. And I'm faster, so I can avoid Horn Drill. And sure, it has some other moves. Actually, I am actually going to send in Executor, because this is going absolutely nowhere. And also, I'm, I am going to use a Max Revive on Blastoise. I said I would try to do it without items, but I will use a Max Revive because I want it. I want the finale to be like the very start. I want it to be the starters against each other. And hopefully I'll have enough Pokemon left by the end, but when they send out their, um, their Venusaur, so I give you a good enough idea of I could have done this without items. I'm, I could heal with Mega Drain. I want a Solar Beam because I've only used that once. I think somewhere in Victory Road. Solar Beam! Completely obliterating the Rhydon. Even though I'm level 45. I am using the strongest grass move that exists. And here comes Gyarados. Well, our electric type user is out. So Snorlax, we still haven't used you much. We use you for one rock slide against a Dragonite until we realize, wait, that probably doesn't work as a barrier. Have some fun. Throw rocks at the flying thing. Dragon, water, Pokemon. Hydro Pump, there we go. One of its two dangerous moves, it has one other. It's called Hyper Beam. Something Sheriff can learn via level up, but we're not there yet, because we're actually at a lower level than I thought I would be. Not even half. Okay, Dragon Range, that's decent. Have I ever used Rest? I'm gonna use Rest. Do we paralyze him? No, we can take him out with another Body Slam. If they don't Hyper Beam! But they do. So that's a critical kill on Sheriff. Pain? Probably not. Aragorn strength? Hopefully enough. Not even! It wasn't that much HP! But the level difference is so serious here! Alright, critical kill on like 1 HP or something very low anyway. Here comes Arcanine. Let's make it fire v fire. He's finally evolved his Growlithe. But there's there's a thing. So Growlithe isn't evolved yet. But because it wasn't Arcanine. Growlithe can at level 50 learn flamethrower. This Arcanine is level 63, so you'd think, oh, he kept his Growlithe for so long, so he could teach it flamethrower. But no, that's not how it works, because this is not his ace Pokemon. Therefore, this Arcanine just uses his level up set. Which is Roar, Ember, Leer, Takedown. Nothing else. It's a stone evolution Pokemon. And just like most stone evolution Pokemon, they don't learn moves by level up. They just have their starting four and then that's it. So Arcanine, really not that dangerous. Um... Also, interestingly, like, the the Growlithe that Blue, or in my case, Keys, has had before, hasn't really used anything much better than Ember anyway. So in that sense, it's not that much of a difference between the Growlithe and the Arcanine. If they have Gyarados, which they had in my case, it's been Hydro Pump all the way through, Dragon Rage has been there, Hyper Beam is added for this fight, which is, like, Hydro Pump, Hyper Beam make Gyarados a pretty dangerous Pokémon. Execute is the third of the Pokemon besides Gyarados and Growlithe 
that the rival can gain on their team in the po starting from the Pokemon Tower rival battle. Um, but that's only if the opponent, if the rival doesn't have Venusaur. My rival does have Venusaur, so they won't have Execute. Therefore, they won't have Executor. Execute, if I remember correctly, had Leech Seed, Sleep Powder, another Powder move. I think Poison Powder, Sleep Powder, Hypnosis or something, and then the Solar Beam. Solar Beam is the only damage, properly damaging move. It had Solar Beam. It had its powder moves. Now it's an Executor, it just has Barrage, Hypnosis, and Stomp. That's it. So, you could even make use of the Smart AI thing with Hitmonlee again. Even though then you would be able to put to sleep. Alright, Venusaur. Let's end this off. Coops. Starter v. Starter. If they would have had a Charizard, it would have been Rage slash Fire Blast and Fire Spin. Venusaur would have Razor Leaf. Actually, no, this is Venusaur. Blastoise, if they had it, would be white, uh, Bite, Withdraw, Blizzard, and Hydro Pump. So their Blastoise would actually be very dangerous with two very strong uh, water and ice moves. But this one has Venusaur. 19 levels difference. And compared to Sheriff Coconut and Amigo, 20 levels difference. And they're going for their strongest base power move. I'd argue that it isn't their best move, though. Because they have Razor Leaf, and Razor Leaf always crits. Well, basically always crits, because Venusaur has a base speed of at least 64. Solar Beam, though. If it crits, it's better than Razor Leaf. Otherwise, I'd argue Razor, Le Razor Leaf is better. And Solar Beam, with the level difference, is enough to take out Venus, uh, Blastoise. Another Blazer would have done it, but we don't get that opportunity. Let's use the level 45, Coconut. Actually, there's one move on this entire team that I've never used. Maybe Rest on Storlax? I probably have used Rest at some point. But... You know how we have Aragorn and Propane left? Aragorn might be able to deal some damage. Propane, especially with Flamethrower, Fire Blast, could have done something. So I feel like with the only damaging moves in Venusaur being Grass moves, Propane on its own likely would have been able to take out Venusaur. So I feel like I could have won this fight without using items. But there's one way I want to finish this off. It's too tempting. You can Mega Drain me, get some health. We're gonna become the Pokemon Champion. Coconut. EXPLOSION! <sighs> no! That can't be! You beat my best! After all that work to become the League Champ! Rain is over already? It's not fair! Why? Why did I lose? I never made any mistakes raising my Pokémon! Darn it! You're the new Pokémon League champion! Although I don't like to admit it. Okay! So, you won! Congratulations! You're the new Pokémon League champion. You've grown up so much since you first left with Squirtle. Alka, you have come of age. Keys, I'm disappointed. I came when I heard you beat the Elite Four, but when I got here, you had already lost. Keys, do you understand why you lost? You have forgotten to treat your Pokémon with trust and love. Without them, you will never become a champ again. Alka. You understand that your victory was not just your own doing. The bond you share with your Pokémon is marvelous. Okay. Come with me. <coughs> Congratulations, Alka. This floor is the Pokémon Hall of Fame. 
Pokemon League champions are honored for their exploits here. Their Pokemon are also recorded in the Hall of Fame. Alka, you have endeavored hard to become the new League champion. Congratulations, Alka. You and your Pokemon are Hall of Famers. Our starter coops the Blastoise at level 46. And caught at Route 5, Amigo the Persian, the Hyper Beam Master at level 45. Caught on Route 8, Propane the Vulpix, which only evolved four levels ago, if you remember. Then, in the Fighting Dojo, we got Aragorn the Hitmon Lee, now at level 46. Sheriff the Snorlax at level 45, which we caught at Route 16, just west of Celadon. And finally, from the Safari Zone, Coconut the Executor at level 45. Scene 137. Wow, we see actually a lot of Pokemon. I've caught 42. Looking good. Go find my aid when you get 50. And I will. That will be in the next episode. But first, let's just enjoy the credits. Thank you very much so far for watching this walkthrough. It has been an amazing journey. There will be one more episode that's part of the standard walkthrough. One post-game thing that we can do now. And after that, bonus episodes. Those on the stream, you can stay because I will be um, streaming what will be the final YouTube episode uh, in this stream. Bonus episodes will be in a stream or a recording in the future. Um, but considering this will be the end of one of the YouTube episodes, I would like to thank you very much for watching this ad uh, adventure with me, chatting with me in Twitch and YouTube Premiere. It's been an exciting journey, and I'm looking forward to continuing with it into the future. Now, what is the next game? Um, I'm not going to announce that yet, because as I said, this is not... Even though we've beaten the champion, and there is a post-game thing. After the next episode, so after the final episode of the main game, I will announce what the next main series Pokemon game is that we will be playing. And I have an idea of like a special way of how I announce it. I won't just say, oh, I'm playing this Pokemon game. I won't be. It will be special. We have to wait for one more episode before you find out what game is next.
See you next time. And always, always remember that you are worth it.